Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we all doing today? Hope you all had a good, nice, safe week and we were all very productive. All right, first, I would like to thank everybody, 27 people subscribed to me on Instagram. I've never had that many people uh, and it was a matter of like three days. So all of you that have subscribed to me on Instagram, thank you very much. Uh, check out the new photos and videos that I have on there. Um, I think you'll really like them. Um, so, all right, today, as you can see, we have a whole new tool line. Uh, uh, well, one tool of a tool line uh, that we are, that I have played with, and I'll explain to you right now where um, and how I came about this. It is a set, the Senko. And it is their cordless um, brad nailer. And it is the um, F18 model. So it's their top model that they have in the brad nailers. <clears throat> now, a little history on why I purchased this thing. All right, years ago, we owned Senko Tools. We owned their drywall guns that we used to screw the radiant panels to wood flooring when we were doing radiant heat. Then Wurzbo, which, is, which was bought out by Upanor, had a panel system and they went to Senko and asked them to, to make them a drill, cordless, but with an extension that we can stand up and drill. So it was a cordless, and I think it was a 12 volt drill that had this like three and a half foot tube and at the end you would load in 150 it was a band of pretty much drywall screws and it was not a roll it was a, just a band and with a handle that screwed into the tube and we would walk around and screw the panels down to the wood floor and the panels had grooves in them with aluminum and then they would come in and lay the radiant heat in a curved pattern and they work great I sold them when I left New York to come here to Florida I didn't need I didn't need them. We I knew I wasn't going to be doing those type of radiants. So, but the tools were phenomenal. The drywall drills and that we loved. We used them countless hours, and we had absolutely no problem with them. And they were, like I said, made by Senko for Wurzbo. Well, for the past like two weeks, we had this massive. Uh, somebody recommended me to this family, and right near where I live, they put this massive summer kitchen, pool, hot tub, uh, arbor, made the patio bigger, screened in, you name it, they did it. So we had a rough in gas, water, waste, uh, you know, they had electric to do. Well, they came in and extended the patio. And yet the patio, um, they extended like 20 by 30 feet, another 10 feet out this way. So what they did was they hired this trim carpet, it was a father and son. Now we were there five different times, two days in a row, then another day, another day, and another day. Well, after like the, the third day, this father and son team came in and they were doing the cedar uh, ceiling, they were doing all the trim, the crown molding, all the, trim the pillars out, the kitchen, everything. And one of the days we were installing a new tankless for them. And I was hearing this weird sound like every couple of seconds and then multiple times. So in one of the parts when I took a break to have my cigar and I walked over and I saw them and I see them on Baker scaffolding and they're nailing up the ceiling. And I see these tools. So I go over to them and I you know, introduce myself and I start talking. One was like, hey, you want, you, wanna, you wanna try it? I'm like, yeah. So I'm looking for like a scrap. He goes, no, no, go on the Baker scaffold. He goes, you know, yeah. So I'm up there with the machine, block of wood, the hammer, hammering in, nailing them in, you know, nailing into the tongue. And I did like 30 or 40 shots. I went, wow. Then the next day we were there, they were doing the pillars. So I got to play with it again. So then I started talking to him. And then I found out where he bought it from. And it's a local tool company called Ernie's Tools. And I went there and they're a Senko dealer and I purchased one. It's a phenomenal tool. I've been playing with this thing now for about a week here in the garage. The difference in the tool, okay, basically it's an 18 gauge brad nailer. They make a finish nailer. 
16 gauge straight shot it's an 18 volt lithium-ion battery comes with one battery yes I know one battery instruction manual charger that can actually charge the battery at 80% in 15 minutes it comes with a nice bag with a shoulder strap and that's about it I purchased this thing will do from one inch to two and an eighth so I purchased a one inch and two inch brad nails so what what this thing has is the difference in this is this chamber right here this chamber is an air chamber a compressed air chamber this thing works just like a pneumatic nailer but instead of it having a spring pistons what it does is that the battery through the mechanism charges up this tank and then fires the nail in like an air nailer and it is so accurate so ease of use and pretty much there is a very small amount of working parts in here so there's less downtime on this thing you can get 400 shots out of the battery the batteries are around ninety three dollars the tool cost through 360 uh, the reason that I, I like using the nailer here now down here I have Milwaukee's brand nailer <clears throat> and I was going to purchase a second one we do have to remove trim a lot of times at houses so I usually back the nail out and then rehammer them in I have a set I wanted to put the brad nailer back on my truck so that I could use the, the brad nailer to nail back in the trim to finish to put back what we took off when we have to get into a wall or a cabinet or whatever so that gave me the opportunity to get this one on the truck and this one here in the shop all right now the unit has dry fire prevention so at the last nail it will not fire so it will not dry fire it has an LED light let me get this closer it has an LED work light it has a depth setter and what side okay here we go it has the on off button and it has two modes it has one mode where you push it in fire it or it has another mode which we're going to go over in a second where it will do three nails in one second by just holding the trigger and boom 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 we'll do three nails in one second so it's called bump fire and it has trigger the regular safety trigger fire all right so let's get through the whole thing i charged up the battery again the battery has a fuel gauge on it there we go it has a fuel gauge on it it's fully charged it took takes about about 20 minutes to give it a full charge so battery goes in but of course i don't have any nails in it it has that's how we open up the nail chamber oh to free a jam you just once one allen screw this thing flops down you free the jam push it back up tighten it you don't have to remove it put it back up and you're back into business this thing will shoot uh, stainless steel um, brads all right so load it insert battery okay hold the button it stays solid green it's on oh nope sorry it flashed that's now on bump fire so let's grab some scrap wood there's your three nails now now it's oh, flashed again Making me look stupid here. There we go. Turn it off. Now, the unit will go off 
in 35 minutes. So if you leave the power on, within 35 minutes the, the unit will turn, down, turn off. But turn it on, hit it, and it'll flash, and then we're back in back in the mode. See one of them, I, two of them, it didn't go down all the way. That just didn't push hard enough. Now, depth setup. We'll go to I'll go down and show you. So these last nails right here, one, two, three, four, five, they're just they're right at the top of the wood because I moved the depth setter up. Now, all right, tool is off. Take the battery out. All right, it's safe. All right, the um, belt hook. Belt hook, uh, ladder hook, rafter hook. Adjustable from one side to the other. Well, I'm about a thousand here today. Okay, we you unscrew. I actually moved this because it was on the other side, and as you know, I'm a lefty, so it actually got my way. But if you adjust it more, so you take it all the way out, it pulls out, and then you have. A, yeah, let me get up. Let me get everything out of here so you can see it. Okay, this three pieces, actually four pieces. You have the actual hook that has grooves in it. So there's one, two, three, four, five grooves. Then you have this back plate that actually has the nut in it that accepts the bolt. And then you see the notches in here? So basically, this is adjustable by, it falls into the notches. So you can make this thing all the way back down into the, oops, actually I got it backwards. So you can make it all the way back down into the tool, or you can make it that far out from the tool. So let's just say, I like it on this side. So I drop in the, the rafter hook. I'll just put it together and then I'll show it to you. So you see, see how it is there? Then you put this piece in the back, it covers up that hole, pushes out the bolt, and then catch it by hand first, and then a screwdriver. It's quite a bit of threads, especially when you have it out further, and it's easier if you put it down on the surface and do it, instead of sitting there fighting, holding it up. Man, it's getting hot here in Florida. But yeah, it's a very nice, I can't, I, um, actually I'm doing um, a little um, sink. This is a dipper well for an ice cream uh, scoops. And the faucet, you know, is going to go there. I still have to drill the hole. I laminated it. I got to trim this out. I'm going to put some edging, a backer, and then some legs. This is for one of my restaurants. We yeah, have to do this dipper well to make a little scoop, like a little countertop for them. So I'm going to be using that to trim out everything, and it should work really nice. So I'm going to get that, um, try this out. But I've been nailing tons of stuff uh, just to play with it, and I, re I really like the tool. And playing with it on the job site, actually doing in, you know, doing work with it, um, it's very comfortable. Especially working overhead, it's very comfortable. Um, I was using, I did use this. But most of it was the, uh, the they, they call it a finish nailer, but it's a brad nailer. They do make an angled, um, they make an angled um, finish nailer here. They actually show them on the um, instruction sheet here. But what I like about it is that chamber. 
So, see, here's all, here's the different nailers. You have the two brads and you have the two finish. You see the angled and straight. This actually, when you release a catch, this whole thing drops down to release the jam. And these tools um, will only fire till five nails, and then that's it. They won't fire after that. Uh, but I decided to do the brad nailer because I do use more brad nails than I actually do finish nails. So that's what I, I, I decided to purchase. And the difference in price is I think only $20. Um, the finish nailer was like, yeah, 283 Yeah, 263 yeah, 283 Gee, today is, whew. All right, uh, that pack out. Holy God, we did three tanklesses. And as you can see in the background over here, um, I started a whole nother pack out system. This actually will, is gonna be for my pickup for now, not the bottom roller one. And eventually when I get my other truck, um, I'll be using that. But um, here, let me pull it forward. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock it in to the truck with the plate back further so that I can, that they don't slide around. And you know, let me get this moved up front here, and I'll just go over. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the pack out and show you. So the bottom part of the pack out. The bottom pack out, the large one with the wheels. Uh, we put two different drills, a sawzall, open end wrenches, socket wrenches, the, the larger tools, the hammer and stuff like that. Mounted a charger to the uh, lid, because you, which you can. I'll go over that when I bring the other pack out. And just basically larger. Then on the medium one, we put some of the smaller tools in. The levels, the chisels, or the bits and stuff like, well not the bits, excuse me. The wrenches, the channel locks, the pliers, yada, yada, yada. Then in the small pack out, we put all of the bits and um, uh, the scissors and you know uh, socket wrenches and, I mean, um, uh, nut drivers. All right, then I got another customizable foam insert. And what we did is we took our second Upano machine and put it in there with all of the heads, the grease, batteries, rag, and half and three quarter rings. Then in this one, which is the small um, that has the eight bins in the center, we put all our straps and hangers. And then this one, we put all of our Upano fittings, our rings, strapping and other small miscellaneous tools we need for that and my god wheeling this in first of all we don't have to schlep our tool bags wheeling this into a job setting it out and again look at my instagram you'll see how we set it up and we use that um the wall table setting this thing up and having everything in that box we even put the glue our compound our teflon tape everything Basically, we carry that in, and besides the other material that we need, like piping and gas fittings and stuff like that, we have everything right there. So, all right, uh, I think we, I think I spoke enough. All right, again, I'd like to thank everybody that subscribed to me on Instagram. Again, I'll post my Instagram below. I'll have my email. Um, oh, yes, speaking of email, for those of you that have sent me messages, I'm having a problem with my email, uh, on my iPad, on my phone, on my, my computer, on my laptop, everything. For some reason, I, I was not receiving email for over a week, or even a little more. And now I'm receiving sporadic email, but only like BS stuff. And I'm trying to square this away with AOL, I reset my account multiple times, my daughter's trying it, my wife's trying it. Um, I will get to your questions, I know, and I can't remember your name. Socks, um, oh God, I apologize. You're, you're asking me about the LR32 system. Um, I'm not sure if you know, I do have a separate video on that where I'm, I actually demo the LR32 and I think you want to do the SYS drawers. I don't use the LR32 for the SYS drawers. I actually have, I bet, as the Italians would say, I have, I keep, Four of each, and as you can see, they are quite dusty. 16 inch, 19, 219s. I keep spacers that I will actually put this like this, rest the drawer 
slide on and then screw. So each one, like I think this is for a, a, a sustainer four, this is a sustainer three. And then I have a whole bunch of them right here. Look, and I just lost them, as you can see. No, actually, this is not. This is actually a box frame that I was actually looking for. Then I have a whole box of them. Well, this is my drill blank here. But you see, I have them 3 inch, 5 inch, and I have 4 to 6 of each. And these are my spacers. So that's what I actually do drawer pieces on. And most, most all of the SYS drawers. And I just, all you have to do is just put them, put them on, the, on the base to start the first one. And then rest them onto that. And then keep going. And you'll have plenty of room between them to do it. So if that helps you, uh, if you're watching, if that helps you. But I will try to get back to the questions and the emails as soon as I get this ridiculous problem solved. All right, um, again, found, I hit 13,000. Thank you again for the subscribes, all the comments, all the likes, all the questions. Um, I can't tell you um, how much I appreciate it. So you all be safe out there. Uh, stay busy. And I will see you on the next video. Okay? You have a nice weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.